I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. What a mess. Yeah, what a mess for Ole Miss. See the logo right behind me. Might as well change that I to an E. Ole Miss, because it is a huge mess in Oxford, Mississippi, for a program that has seen um, a lot of success this decade under Hugh Freeze and that staff. Um, every year from 2012 all the way to 2015, their win total improved. And then two years ago, winning the Sugar Bowl, their first major bowl win since 1970. Um, but last year on the field, it was a mess. We're talking about a program that only won five ball games, a defense that was terrible, and the five win total and seven loss total, they were bowl ineligible. But that's on the field. Off the field, much worse because, as you know, for years the NCAA has been investigating the Rebels program, primarily um, you know, charging the Rebels with recruiting violations. And earlier this year in February, even more charges filed against Hugh Freeze and the staff. But, of course, it doesn't stop there. Of course, Hugh Freeze, um, you know, happened to deal with a former head coach at Ole Miss in Houston Nutt who filed a lawsuit against the school for defamation. And next thing you know, Nutt's attorneys are investigating the phone records of Hugh Freeze's university-issued cell phone and found a female escort service call on there. And initially, Freeze uh, tried to cover it up, but instead he played the role of a big bad liar when he said it was an accident call, a butt dial call, and yeah. Well, when old Miss officials got a hold of the phone record and did their own investigating, uh, they found even more unusual stuff. Um, they called it a disturbing pattern. That's all they would say, but that's all they had to say. And for Hugh Freeze, if he didn't quit on July 20th, he was going to get fired. So now old Miss, as if you're dealing with a 2017 season in which um, you're coming off a losing year. The program earlier this year already issued a one-year uh, bowl ban, a self-imposed bowl ban. Now you don't have your head coach there anymore. And you can say what you want about Hugh Freeze, the fact that he's a liar, the fact that it, um, it, it looks like cheating has been going on for several years. But, but one thing you say about him, he does know football on the field. He knows X's and O's, and they were very productive with him as a head coach. So – now he's not there anymore, and your new head coach is an interim, um, and it's an interim right now in the form of Matt Luke, co-offensive coordinator. So Luke now gets thrown into the position of handling an Ole Miss program um, that could use any type of good news it can get. Well, offensively, I think there are a lot of good news pieces for this team, um, the biggest being Shea Patterson, who was going to redshirt last year, but... Ole Miss had the plan because late in the year, Chad Kelly, the incumbent quarterback, tore ACL. So we saw what Patterson could do, and he did pretty well. I know they lost two of their last three, but I think he did his part and played extremely well. We saw how well he throws the ball, how many yards he can rack up as far as passing, but also to the fact that he's elusive and can keep plays going out of the pocket, and he can extend the play very well, kind of Johnny Manziel-like. I mean, Qualities that you really can't coach a quarterback to do. His instincts are, are very good. So, you know, he only played three games last year, um, but threw six touchdowns, only three picks. Um, did have 55% completion percentage, but remember, some of those passes were dropped. So that percentage, not necessarily his fault for why it wasn't higher than 55%. He'll have some terrific targets to throw to in 2017. Yeah, they're sophomores, but the potential to be terrific for the Rebels. Uh, one of them, as a freshman, Van Pedersen last year, three touchdown catches, almost 600 yards receiving, and nearly 50 receptions. So you have a little experience there. Other sophomores, like A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, should help the cause, and they'll all need to help the cause because the Rebels uh, lost Evan Ingram. He's moved on. Ingram um, had over 60 catches and almost 1,000 yards receiving, so he's going to be a big loss for them. The Rebels last year were number one in the SEC in passing. They had 314 yards through the air per game, 13th best in the country. So we'll see if Patterson can keep that going. The ground game, um, you know, th this was an area last year that saw them rush for only 149 yards per game, a bit of a drop-off uh, from the year before. Um, and the ground game is going to be an uncertainty this year because you don't know what Jordan Wilkins will provide, you know. Granted, he's been there a while, but last year we didn't see him at all because of academic problems. But 
looks like they're going to have him ready to go in 2017 as well as Eric Sweeney. But again, it is a big um, mystery as far as what that ground game will feature. And regardless of how much Ole Miss runs or throws, it's going to be up-tempo because the other co-coordinator uh, is a new guy in Bill Longo, and he has coached um, up-tempo offenses before. And I think you'll see the same thing again. Offensive line, um, if Ole Miss has a terrible season, I don't think it will be these guys' fault because they should be in for another terrific year. You return almost all of them. The center's back, Sean Rawlings. Both guards return. Jordan Simmons on the right. Javon Patterson on the other side. And the right tackle, you have Rod Taylor. The only unknown will be the left tackle, and that is uh, Greg Little. The defense, though. Now, this is a big reason why I don't think Ole Miss is going to get out of the cellar in the SEC West. Defensively, I'm not optimistic about these guys. It's like watching Texas Tech. You know offensively they're going to put points on the board, but the defense is going to give up more, and the defense is going to be on the field a lot longer than the offense. And last year, that was the case. The Rebels... 34 minutes plus of time of possession per game. That's how long the defense spent time on the field. And anybody who knows anything about football knows that the longer a game goes, the tougher it is to play defense. And last year, the Rebels' biggest problem, they couldn't stop anybody on the ground. 246 yards rushing per game is what they allowed. It was the ninth worst total in college football out of 128 teams. But we'll see if Marquise Haynes can have a better year. Now, he's had 25 sacks in his career. Not bad and had 53 tackles a year ago. But remember, he had 10 sacks two years ago, and he showed a lot of promise as a freshman. So we'll see if the last year for Haynes ends up being his best. And Breland Sparks is back. He is a junior. Um, now, Benito Jones, they returned him as a freshman. Last year at defensive tackle, had 39 stops. Not bad for his first year. Linebackers, we'll see if they can step up with Marquise Gates. Covering the outside, inside, guy that's been there for a little bit, that's Dietrich being Dukes. The secondary with some experience uh, at the safety position first, uh, Zedrick Woods, um, who leads all Rebels coming back with three interceptions. Jalen Julius with experience at one corner. You got Jalen Jones who can play the corner. And a guy that they're really excited about, look, this was not one of Ole Miss's best recruiting classes this past year. Many sources had them. Um, just barely a top 40 class after they had been posting top five classes under Hugh Freeze in recent seasons. But one of the guys who are really high on from that class is D.D. Bowie. Uh, Bowie played a lot of positions in high school, both offensively and defensively. Ole Miss hopes that they can put him at the corner spot. So will he redshirt this year? I highly doubt it. Special teams will be a big strength for the Rebels. Um, Gary Wunderlich is back. Only missed one kick last year, 96%. Uh, field goal percentage, and you return the punter in Will Gleason, a whopping 44 yards per punt. But the Rebels are looking for new returners as far as kick and punt. So schedule for the Rebels, the first two games should be wins. You can see right there, non-conference teams, and those two teams, South Alabama and UT Martin, should be warm-ups for the Rebels. But the next three games on the road, got to play Cal, who I know is not a Pac-12 powerhouse, but still, it will be a much tougher game than those first two that Ole Miss will see. And then you get a week off before playing the Crimson Tide. You can have two months off before playing the Crimson Tide. It won't matter. Bama will run away with it. Same thing with the Auburn game. The middle part of the schedule, you get those three games at home, but LSU, I don't see a win. And Arkansas, maybe a slight edge to the Razorbacks. You get them at home this time last year. The Razorbacks won. And then at Kentucky is no longer a gimme. Uh, Mark Stoops' squad will be ready. you got to play him in Lexington. And then the final two games are conference games, A&M, who you beat last year on the road, and Mississippi State, who made Ole Miss have egg all over their face after the Bulldogs went to Oxford and won that game by 35 points. The Vegas win total has Ole Miss at 5.5, and this was before Hugh Freeze stepped down. I don't think Ole Miss gets over this win total. And matter of fact, I don't think they win five. I think four wins at best is where Ole Miss will finish. It'll be a fun offense. I do think Patterson is going to have a terrific career. But defensively, way too many red flags, including a rush defense that couldn't stop you or me if we ran the ball. I look for the Rebels to struggle. But the worst news for Ole Miss could very well be when the NCAA decides to reach their verdict on punishment for the program. That's my look at Ole Miss. Catch you later.